Hi everyone. Today we're going to look at how you create a shared application in Xamarin. And this is the primary reason you would have chosen Xamarin over various other methodologies. It's so you can share code between iOS apps and Android apps. So let's get started, create a new solution, go down to iOS, Unified Appy, Universal, and we'll, for, this, for this tutorial, we'll just have a single view application and we will call this multi.ios. So that's going to load. And if you followed my tutorials up to this point, you'll notice all of these files look familiar and the folders themselves. And all that this app does in its view controller is in this case, absolutely nothing. So let's change that. Let's create a label that we're going to add to our screen. And we'll just call it label equals new UI label. And we'll give it some properties such as where to put it by defining our frame. And we call that new core graphics dot CG rect. And let's just shove it anywhere at location 50 comma 50 make it 200 decimal points wide and 200 high and then we have to give it some text of course so we'll say text equals I am a label close that and then once we've created the label of course we have to show it so we say view dot add label and if we put that in our simulator, if we load it up, it should show us that our label will be there in the iPhone 4S as I've got running here. There we go, we have a label. So let's stop that running and let's add an Android project to this solution. And to do that, go up to this pink icon, right click, click add, add new project, C sharp, Android, Android ice cream sandwich application. And we're going to call this multi.droid. And the reason we don't call it multi.android is because there are some namespaces and methods that that name would interfere with and it will cause you loads of headaches later. So always call it .droid for an Android project and .ios for an iOS project. So click OK. And you'll notice it's added another folder, multi.ios and multi.droid. And in multi.droid, if we just close that, if we go to main activity, we can see that it creates a button and it says every time you click the button I want you to add the number of clicks to it. But if I want to run that in my simulator up here where I would normally press play I don't have an Android simulator I still have iOS devices and that's because we need to set the multi.droid as a startup project. So if you click that Everything now changes up here to debug. It still says iPhone simulator, but ignore that. On this side, we have our Android virtual devices or any real devices that you have plugged in. And if you click play, it should load it up in the virtual device, which I have here. There we go. And every time I click the button, I get a number of clicks, which is great. Okay, now let's say I had some complicated function where I wanted to define the actual button text and the label text in the iOS app. How would I combine the code for those two? And the way you can combine that is one of two ways. One is to create what's called a portable class library. That simply is a library of code that takes the lowest common denominator of all of the things that you're trying to target. 
Hence, if you're targeting Android and iPhone, it will only give you a selection of all the things that those two operating systems can do. So you'll never get all of the things that iOS can do and all of the things that Android can do. That may seem a bit restrictive, but portable class libraries are useful because you can compile them into a DLL and you can share them with other people very easily. So that's their big advantage. We're not going to look at those. We're going to look at a shared project. Now a shared project is one where you can put all of your code in and you can access it from this multi.droid and multi.ios. And within that shared code, you can say, if you're targeting iOS, then run this code. If you're targeting Android, then run this code. So you can start to separate these blocks, but still have it shared between your projects. So to create a shared project, on multi.ios solution level, right click, click add, add new project. Come over to C sharp and you'll see you have various options here. There's the portable library I talked about earlier, but we're going to have a shared project and we're going to call this multi, whoops, multi dot shared. Actually, we're just going to call it multi to go with a common naming convention. Click OK and you'll get another folder added to your solution, just called multi with only one class in it. And that's because it doesn't need to compile for Android or iOS or Windows or Mac. So it only needs to say, hey, I've got one class. What do you want me to do? So in our Android app, we have a button dot text that we want to change to something. And if we open up our iOS view controller, we have a text that we want to change to something. It would be really nice if we could have that same text in just one place instead of changing it in both apps all the time. And to do that, we're going to load it up in this myclass.cs right here. So we're going to create a static string here, public static string, and we're going to call it underscore text. We're going to make it equal to shared text. Okay. Okay, let's add this text to our Android application and our iOS application. So first of all, come over to your main activity, which is in Android. And what we're going to do is change our button text to that string that we have in the shared project. So we're going to delete everything here. And we're going to say, I would like a new my class. And you'll notice there is no completion. That's because we haven't added the shared project to our Android project yet. And the way you do that is you click references, you right click it, click edit. <clears throat> and under this tab of projects, you will find your multi project. Click that and click OK. So now it knows to go and look for that project in the multi folder. And so now we should be able to add it. Let's do my class. There it is. Dot text. Excellent. So we're going to save that. And we're just going to run that in our emulator. And it should change the text of our button as soon as we click the button to that string we have in the shared project. So here we go. Click and it says this is shared text. So that's all coming from the one my class place. Let's do the same for iOS. So again with iOS, we go over to references, we right click, click edit, and we add this multi project to it. Click OK. There we go. So now that we've added it, we want to change this text here where it says I am a label. And we're going to change that to the my class text as well. 
So start typing my class. There it is. Dot underscore text. Save that. And then because we want to run this in the iPhone simulator, we're going to right click multi iOS and click set as startup project. And now it changes our debug to the iPhone. Click play. Have a look at your simulator. And our label that pops up, here we go, says shared text. And that's basically how you share code across your projects. So that's just an extremely simple example of how you do it, but it shows the concept. Okay, let's modify it just a touch. Let's put some actual logic into this. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say public static string text, and we're going to make this a method. So we add some brackets here, a curly brace. And in fact, let's delete that. There we go. And so what we're going to do from our Android application is every time we click the button, we're going to send something over here to my class. We're just going to send a number. So we will say int count. And we're going to put a statement, an if statement. So we say if the count is zero, then we're going to change the text. So we're going to say return count is too low and that. Now, if you're not familiar with the statement return, all return does is take the thing that's after it, count is too low, which in this case is a string, and it puts it into here, into this string part of your method. So whenever you call this method from another place, you can say, well, not you can say, when you call it from another place, it delivers back a string according to the logic that it's got in here. And so we're going to say also, let's close that, else return count is perfect. There we go. I'll just put my brackets in. I've taken a shortcut there, which I'm not going to show you yet. So if something calls this method, it's going to get back a string. And which string it gets back depends on what this count equals. If the count is equal to zero, then it's going to say the count is too low. And it's going to send that back. If, it, if the count is different to zero, which is this else part, it's going to return count is perfect. So save that. And come back to your and oh, come back to your Android. Now let's do the iPhone activity first. Okay, so here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and build this. I'm going to try and run it, run, and it will say I can't find this text thing anymore, which is good because we did delete it. So I'm going to say my class dot, and we have this new one here called text, which is an M for method and it returns a string text. So open up your brackets and it's going to ask you for the integer count that you set before. So we're going to send over a one like that. So coming back to my class, if you've sent over a one, we're going to go into here. It'll say, is the count zero? It's not. So it'll skip this. It will go to else and it's going to return count as perfect. And that's what we should see in our label when we run it in the simulator. And it says count is perfect, just what we expect. So let's go to our Android application and right click multi.droid, set as project, and try to run it and you'll get a big error saying, I can't find a variable called underscore text. 
So we can fix that because we know how now. I'm going to delete that. And we're going to say dot text. Open your brackets. And it says, what would you like me to send over to that method? And we're going to send over count because we already have it defined up here, if you recall. So we say count. Close your brackets. And this time we're going to come up here, change our integer count equal to zero. And we're going to come down here and add another line and say count plus plus. That just adds one to the count each time we click the button. So the first time we click the button, it's going to pass count of zero into my class text. And if my class text gets a zero, it will return count as too low. If it returns that, it's going to set the button text to count as too low. The next time you click the button, the count will be one because you added a count earlier. And if you come here, a count of one is not zero. So it'll come to else and it will return count as perfect, which then becomes your button text again. So let's run that in our Android simulator. So the first time I click it, I get count is too low and that count is adding in the background. If I click it again, I get count as perfect. There we go. So that just shows you the power of having these shared projects. I have one block of code here that I've used in both Android and iOS. And so when you're planning to make a mobile application across different devices, including Windows Phone, you can do this. You can share all of this code. And I'll just show you one more thing. With no more code, I'll just show you what we do when, for example, we want to have iOS only code or Android only code. We use special if statements. And the way we use those is we have a hash first and we say if underscore underscore iOS underscore underscore and then we have whatever code for iOS only and then we can say else whoops we have to always put a hash with this else if underscore underscore Android Android code etc etc and then we have to end our end ifs by doing end if. And because we have two of them, we say end if. There we go. So that's how you separate code. And I'm not going to go into that. It's just so you know in case you're looking for it. And that concludes the final tutorial. If you like my videos, then please subscribe and share them if you can if you know lots of people that are struggling with this topic if you have any questions or video requests then simply ask me in the comments and i'll see if i can do a video on them thanks for watching